Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3 Take, where we talk all things Major League Baseball. Here's Kyle Corwin and Nate Reyes. It all starts right now. Welcome back to the 3 Take, presented by Seeky. This is episode 339. I'll be your host, Kyle Corwin, and I'm here with my co-host, Nate Reyes. Nate. Woo! Yeah. We back, we back. Brand new edition. End of February. I mean, what happened? I It feels like it's November. I I don't understand. I mean, I'm glad February, you could make the, no, you know, I don't even need to make an argument. It's a fact. February is the worst month of the year. I'm sorry. I, g- give me some logic. Give me some logic behind it's it. It's just the word, like it's the shortest, it's the... Mm. It's the crap that we have to sit through from a baseball perspective. It's the crap that we have to True. sit through until we actually get to like the real month that baseball kind of gets going. Like, right. yeah, pitchers and catchers, great. We've already doesn't count. We've already yeah. exhausted that. Doesn't nobody cares. Yeah. March. While I still don't believe baseball should start any earlier than April first. March is officially when baseball begins. It's always cold. It's cold out there for you guys, which is yeah. just crazy. Weird. Like it's it's kind of it looks looks like it's kind of chilly in Florida. Did I see that right? Um, it snowed like in this. California. Come on, man. February's yeah. trash. I don't like it. I agree. So I'm glad um, it's basically over. There's always like, why does Valentine's Day like always more expensive than you plan on it being? Every time. You're just adding to the list of reasons it's garbage. Yeah. It it also doesn't help that I'm in I'm in just one of those moods today. I'm sure you can tell from the the our, our brief conversation before we hopped on. It's one of those days where you, just everything annoys you. Yeah. I'll be honest. So yeah. like take that's take, me all the time. <laughs> take what I say on this episode with a grain of salt. I mean, I, I I'd like to think that I stand behind a lot of it, but it'll probably be like a little over the top. But it's just oh, yeah. one of those things where everything everything it's like it's it's one of those days you know if, like you're closing the cereal box and like the tab just won't go in and you're sitting uh-huh. there just tapping it 10 12 times it's mm-hmm. just, it's one of those days just everything is irritating me one of those days for sure like you can't find your keys the yeah like the uh it's just anything you know lose your you lose your wallet you you your belt loop gets stuck in the door handle as you're trying to, or like the little, the little handle to the, to right. the drawer. The, like exactly. Something like that. Yeah. The odds of it happening are one in a million, but just, one in a it thousand, but it, j- it all happens on the same day. Yeah. That's one of these days. With that <laughs> said, let's jump right into talking about the pitch clocks it's that we were up. able to, they were able to, to witness this weekend. Uh, based on what it sounds like, you may be differing, uh, in your opinion, than me, possibly. I I might be reading that wrong, but it sounded like this didn't fire you up as much as it did me. So I'm curious to maybe get your take, your initial take, because we've only seen uh, t- two days of it, Saturday and Sunday. I think there's definitely adjustments that have to be made. And I think... I, I think... It's definitely a a contradiction if MLB refuses to make any changes, you know, if they just set in stone, this is the way it is moving through the season. It didn't fire me up the the same way, but I I can definitely understand the problem. I, I have a simple solution, like a real simple solution. Shut it off after the seventh inning. Like it to to see a game end this way, like or or big moments, it just it doesn't make sense. So yeah, shut it off after like maybe even earlier, maybe like the sixth, and then you just have regular baseball after that. But I don't like the, I don't quite understand the. It's a fifteen second clock, but you have to be set by eight seconds. And attention has to be on the on the pitcher by eight seconds. It's like, what? Why? 
And they say that like the ball doesn't have to be released by the time it hits zero. The motion just has to start. You're telling me it takes eight seconds for a motion to start? That doesn't not with pitch com. Not with the pitch selection already being made. So, like, why that? Maybe like five seconds. It's just it, it's 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 definitely out of hand. It's definitely out of hand. But to see a game end in that way. And you're seeing it all over college, too. Like, I see a lot of college. There's more college baseball stuff going on with the pitch clock than, than just our, our two days of spring training. So it, it's something to where the game is definitely changing. On the positive side of other things, though, I was able to catch, you know, the first couple innings of the Yankees game yesterday, one of their games, and... Seeing eye singles, like multiple in the first couple innings. And I was like, ah, yes. Rewarded for hitting a ball up the middle. Rewarded for hitting a ball hard through the infield. And it's not a rover position throwing you out. It's, it was nice to see. That part was nice. I'm out of the way. I got all my stuff out of the way. So you can just get take a deep breath. No, get fired look, up. Look, look. Take your time. Even with having said all of what I said about today just being one of those days, I was able to wake up today and really reevaluate things before we hopped on here because I was like, I don't want to just get on here and start going off and sounding unreasonable because then my case just falls through the falls through the floor. Like nobody, nobody's gonna pay. Like you're you're not gonna be able to hear any of what I'm saying because I'm just gonna be so riled up. So I I had to you know. Yeah. Dial it back a little bit. But first off, I'll just say that regardless how we really feel about the pitch clocks, the fact that baseball is like dominating the sports world right now yeah. for for better or for worse, people are talking about baseball. People that have followed this game for years, for decades, people who have who are maybe on the newer side of things, people who supposedly major league baseball is trying to reach those those people that are out there i don't really know who that have actively said that they hated the game but apparently with the addition of a pitch clock are now going to start watching baseball completely I, switches their mind it, yeah like <laughs> g- you know what good for major league baseball for identifying these people and and really honing in on on what'll make them start watching baseball all of a sudden over seemingly overnight um but People are talking about it, and I guess that's good. I I don't know if people are looking at this going, you know what? Like, I don't know what percentage of those people are looking at this going, you know what? This is Manfred's done a lot, but with these changes that he's he's incorporated just prior to go, like going into the twenty twenty three season, I'm I'm just out. Like, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. I, I, who knows what that percentage is? Yeah, um, it's true. But like Could I said, be losing I, some long faithful fans this way. And and the thing that really frustrates me about that is is there's so many people out because it's the popular thing to say is is the popular thing is to say, well, good rinse. Those those are old hags anyway. It's like, okay, cool. You you really sent out a banger on Twitter. Like, yeah. congrats on your on your <laughs> 12 retweets on that. You'd really you really crushed yeah. it by just it really burying. made boomers feel just horrible about yeah themselves. you really made the people that aren't even on the app feel just terrible <laughs> about themselves good job it's like no like as much as you want to hate that that era of baseball fans like they helped make baseball what it is today right and there was i mean we've seen golden eras of this game and they were a part of that so don't act like just because you can read advanced analytics that you're somehow like on the uh, you're in the upper echelon of baseball fan like i'm sorry that's just not the reality of it um i'm getting off on tangents again going it back going back to what i was originally saying i dial i was able to dial it back a little bit and i was able to look at the pace of the game i was just watching i mean i'd I'd watched some some baseball this weekend but i was just going back and watching little snippets that were on twitter and Generally speaking, yes, the pace the pace is better. But the thing that just drives me up a wall, and I heard it. I, I want to say it was a, a beat a beat writer or some sort of reporter was talking about it today, 
and they said the pitch clocks don't cut out the baseball it cuts out the non-baseball mm. that's not true that's somebody who hasn't played baseball before thinking that it cuts out the non-baseball there's so mm-hmm. it, baseball is such an intricate sport and for you to just yeah blindly ignorantly sit there and say well it cuts out the dead time if you've played baseball you know that not all of that time is dead time sure yeah. you could you could maybe close the gap a little bit between pitches and i'm all for that yeah naturally of course not with this imposed pitch clock right but to say that from from start to finish once the pitch once the ball has hit the catcher's mitt so when the pitcher releases the next pitch to say all of that time in between is dead time, that's just wildly ignorant because they're, as I was saying, it's a, and you know, this there, it's an intricate sport and there's more planning. There's more micro analysis that goes into each pitch than people that are on their phones yep. in the seats, not even paying attention to realize. Yep. And that's the frustrating part is you've got these broad, general sweeping i don't want to say accusations but generalizations saying that well this is better for the sport because we're getting to the real baseball it's like it's all real it's It's all all, real baseball baseball. you're cutting it it, by cutting out dead time you're also cutting out real baseball you just don't see it that way as a fan but now we're we're expediting all of that and I think that like that argument right there is what is 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 showing the Achilles heel of MLB. That's the issue. You don't know how to market this game enough to teach fans that all the stuff that's happening in between pitches is still necessary in an intricate part an intricate part of the game. Like you need to have those things. You know what I mean? So like for for them to fail to be able to to teach that and market that that is the 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 biggest atrocity of it all you know what i mean it's it's not necessarily how to, and their their argument of of like we're not trying to speed up the games we're trying to have more action i get it but like at a certain point man like you you're just you are trying to speed up the game what's wrong with a pitch clock being, I mean, what's wrong with it being shut off the second the, the hitter is set in the box? You know what I mean? Give him ten seconds in between pitches, and then the second the the hitter's in the box, just shut it off. But like there, there doesn't need to be of got to do it by eight seconds, got to do it by seven seconds, automatic this, automatic that. It just it doesn't make any sense, and then I I have a feeling that we we've gone from such a lack of offense that we're going to go to the other side of the spectrum this year with the banning of the shift, the pitch clock, the limited uh, pickoff moves and in the bigger bases. I think all of that is going to shift a lot towards the offensive side. So I think we're going to get to a point where we're going to need to find that middle ground And I'm just concerned that these adjustments aren't willing to be made in spring training before opening day. I have a feeling this season is going to look different for the whole season. And it's not enjoyable. It's really not. I can support certain things. I can support the bigger bags. It kind of makes sense. You know, when those bags were created and all the dimensions were created, the average size of a baseball player is like probably five seven. Now the average guy is probably six one, right? So the bigger feet, safety, you can argue that if you want an uptick in stolen bases and, and just run production in general, I can support that. You tweeted it out the other day. Our game is our game because of not having a clock. What make I mean? What what makes us any different from other sports at this point? And and that's exactly my point. Is like, I mean, we do so many of these episodes. I can't remember what I have or haven't said about the bigger bases, for example. But you bring up the you bring up the bigger bases. At this very moment in time, having seen the pitch clock and the atrocity that I think it is, I can now look at the bigger bases and go, you know what? 
I can not, take that. <laughs> not a hill, yeah. not a hill worth dying on. Exactly. Because with the bigger bases, you don't fundamentally change the game. Right. You t- you you tweak the game and the success rates or failures, whichever side of the ball you're on, of a facet of the game, base running. Yeah. Catch catch your effectiveness. What right. however you want to look at it. Right. With a pitch clock, you are inherently changing fundamentally 100% the game because you're taking a game that for a hundred plus years has not been timed. And like you right. said, now we're no different than any other sport. Yeah. Because like by definition, there's you put a cap on realistically how long a game can go now like sure you're going to have your outliers where you're still going to have 20 pitch at bats with guys found things off but in terms of like looking at it on a graph you're you're basically putting a cap on how long a game can last and to me i'm not i'm not okay with fundamental like changing a fundamental aspect of baseball so i can look at the i can look at the bigger bases and be like you know what not worth freaking out about the thing that the thing that I can't appreciate with this pitch clock debate is so much of the uh, like I'm I'm very clearly on one side of this debate. The people on the other side that are so for this thing and are just blindly yes, give me give me more pitch clock is just the the straight up exaggeration of time frames when they're when they're making their case they're saying I, you know i don't we need baseball needs this pitch clock because i don't need guys and i'm not going to use names here but i was in a group chat with some of our former fantasy guys this weekend talking mm-hmm. about it and one of them said i mean i, I still love them don't get me wrong still love these guys mm-hmm. but one of them said you know i don't need it i don't need three minutes in between each pitch and i said who's taking three Three minutes. Give yeah. me examples of when you're seeing three minutes occur between pitches. Like I, I get what you're trying to say, but like bring bring factual data to the yeah. table to make this argument for a pitch clock for shortening the game. Don't pretend like we were just totally sick of the pace of the game ten, maybe even five years ago. Because up until uh about 10, 12 years ago, baseball games were under three hours. You can go look at the average length of a game. Up until about 10 to 12 years ago, they were under three hours. What's changed? Yeah. Certainly, they certainly have, haven't shortened the amount of advertising that's going out there, but right. that we're not going to touch that. Right. Manfred's minions, and I'm when I say that, I'm talking about the people that are around him, but also the fans that are in support of this pitch clock movement. You're, you're part of Manfred's minions too. Just so you know, like it, uh, sorry, the truth hurts. That's, that's just where you are right now. The people that are saying, you know, we baseball needs a pitch clock, bring more realistic data to the, to the table. When you're having this conversation, don't try to convince me that they're taking minutes between pitches because that's just not realistic. No, it's just not not realistic. It's not. And, and and I've I've said this, I think my biggest argument, and it's probably because I I've coached for a little while now, and it's like don't you want kids to replicate the product that you're putting on national television? Like, don't you want baseball to just be almost the same all the way through? I've been saying you know? that since the beginning since Manfred started with his gimmicks, man. I've been yeah. saying like you can't make baseball so level specific that you can't like you were to to use your word you can't replicate it all the way down sure there's going to be differences high, high schools aren't going to be able to do this and like, and it's like it's pitch almost com, what are no, we doing i know and there's certain things that just like it if robo umps whenever they come if they come i've already beat this to death but it is the removal of of any strategy or talent from a catcher at all it's gone and you're just handing over this like god complex even greater than what they've always had for umpires now you're just going to see it trickle down and into all these younger ages and it's just 
I don't know, man. You're just, you're trying too much all at once. And the limitations of pickoffs, I think that part really bugs me. I think that part bugs me. You know, the limitations of, of only being able to, what was it, two? The third one, you have to make sure you get an out or a free base is awarded or whatever. With the pitch clock, that's a free stolen base. It's a free stolen base. If you know a guy is thrown over twice, doesn't want to risk giving up a free base on the third attempt by not getting you out, and you're just watching the clock drop, that's a free that's a free stolen base. The the broadcasting issues, right? All these 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 you're gonna want to watch replays. I like replays. Our game is so fast that you need to see replays. And typically you only have one view. So if you want to see other things happening on, on other parts of the field on a TV broadcast and you're trying to show that replay, this is a production nightmare. It's a production nightmare. And there's so many. And you talked about like you, you sent out that tweet of the, the goal of speeding up a game, but it takes longer to enforce this rule of an automatic strike or an automatic ball or a walk or whatever than it does to just take the extra two or three seconds to deliver the pitch. You've used up that time explaining the new setup, the new account, the new whatever with on base. So I just, I don't see how this form can stick around the whole time. There has to be some adjustments. There has to be. And I am praying that the the Ken Griffey's and the CC's, you know, CC Sabathia's of the world that are working in the MLB front office are are trying to push this, are trying to incorporate normal parts of the game and still be able to get it in that sweet spot, in that middle ground. I don't think there's any issues. I think I think the 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 game is hopefully not gone, but it's headed that way. And look, I I in that same group chat that I, I was talking about, I mentioned, I said, you know what? Like fine, because it, I get to I get to the point. I'm going to preface this by saying I'm no better of a baseball fan than anybody out there. Sure. I just yeah. ca- I just very much care about the sport and the future yeah. of it because it's just about all I've really known since I was like two or three years old. So I very much care about the the health, the well-being and the future of it. So like, yeah, I'm going to get a little fired up. And when when topics like this come up where there's such a loud. I. Personally, I'm of the belief that the people that are pro pitch clock, despite the headlines that are being pushed on us, are in the minority. I I genuinely yeah. believe that. And you're not yeah. going to hear that. That's going to be wildly disputed on social media. People are going to say, no, like I was reading. I, I saw an article today from I'm pretty sure it was like from Major League Baseball where it was like fans rave about the new pitch clock. I said, I don't know. I don't know no. who you've been talking to. No. But as I was saying, I get to the point on certain hot button issues like this with baseball where I just I go totally hands off. I'm like, you know what? Like, again, who am I to try to, like, change people's minds? I'm just I'm just sharing my own opinion. I don't at this point. I don't care. Do Major League Baseball. Do whatever you want. Drive the product into the ground for the sake of money and the the sake of trying to capture this this demographic that you're never going to capture because they just genuinely hate the game of baseball. They don't care about it. They don't think it's a real sport. And in this group chat, I got to the point where I was like, you know what? Make the games as short as you want. Have the pitch clock be legitimately three seconds. But don't be upset when your favorite team that's, is dealt that's the yeah. Is dealt an unfortunate outcome because of these new rules. It's just that, a matter of time. It's just a matter of time before there is a big clutch scenario where these rules overtake the I hate to use the word integrity, but it is basically the integrity of what should be a result, a normal result that we've been used to for over 100 years. You already saw it in two days. I just, I don't think that we're going to get through this unscathed. There has to be adjustments. And it's really weird to bring all of these changes on at once. All of them happening at once is a lot. 
And you mention it. It's it has only been two days, and I get that. And I mean, admittedly, we're we're talking integrity here. Hand up. I I did buy in a little bit to the sensationalism of it, just j- just because of the sure. pure shock yeah. factor. Because yeah. you're looking at this going. I get it. It's a new thing. It's going to take some time to to fix. But we literally just what. I don't care if it had only if the rules had been in place for an hour. We yeah. just watched a baseball game. Again, don't care if it's a spring training game. We just watched a baseball game end without a pitch being thrown. Yeah. I don't care how long the that rules makes been in no place. Sense. That's not baseball. That's not any sport. That's not any sport. That's not any sport. With the competitive indifference or total lack thereof. Yeah. What are that how people how people find this like and in, uh, to be an enticing feature of the game just absolutely blows my mind. I, I don't understand. I really I don't. I mean, there's, uh, there's at this point, it's like, why even have half innings? Just give each team 10 minutes. <laughs> just give them 10 minutes on each side. And then switch. However many runs you score is what you get. Switch. It's a joke. It's 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 not baseball. Yeah, all and, these and the as fired up as you are about this, you will you will get this out of me if robo umps are are brought into place. I will match this energy. I'm look, I like I was just saying, these people I will be I will be waiting and I will be the first to say I told you so when the when there is an outcome that is unfavorable to said fan base or said Mm -hmm. like faction of, of baseball fans when something goes wrong and they say, this is a, this is a joke. How could we brought this on ourselves? We, this minority, again, I believe it's a minority was just complaining about very loudly how they wanted a pitch clock. The pitch clock is going to be here. Yeah. And there's people saying you, this won't be an issue come middle of the season. I don't believe that. I don't don't believe that. I don't either. You think about again. You have to have had, you you have to have played baseball at, at a certain point to understand that this is a, a very legitimate thing. If you bring up a, a a guy from say T-ball pitch coach and you bring him up for 20, 20 years, and he's played the game without having to think about a pitch clock, and his his rhythms are are the way they are. His mm-hmm. his thought process between each pitch is what it is. Sure, you can tweak that a little bit, but if you put him into a pressure packed moment, or or really anybody in a pressure packed moment, yeah, there's a very good chance that they're not going to be thinking about it at that point in time. Yeah. And when that pitch clock hits zero or hits seven, and he's not ready. And the game ends, and this is a postseason broadcast that we're watching in October. Just know that just know that I warned you. Yeah. Because it's coming. Because to think to 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 the people that say you're naive to think that this isn't this isn't better for baseball. Well, you're naive to think that to those same people, you're naive to think that there's gonna be a hundred percent success rate. Right throughout yeah. the year, and that's just going to look goofy for the sport. Yeah, and I tweeted out. I said this base. This like the the pitch clock facet of the game is going to be the the laughing stock of sports moving forward, at least for the next few months as they work well, it's this just, out. It's stuff that we don't forget. And like you look at, uh, I think the comparable situation or or rule or whatever is when you look at the NFL and you look at passes. You know, like the pass interference calls. You're talking about or what is a catch and what's not a catch. I mean, we're still talking about Des Bryant against the Packers, if that was a catch or not. We're still talking about that that PI that wasn't called against the Saints. We're still talking about this play in the Super Bowl where the Chiefs win because of this play. And it's just like this anticlimactic robbing the sport of that moment, robbing the fans of that moment. Bottom nine, bases loaded, two outs, full count. That is a fan moment. That is created for us. 
That is what every kid dreams of having, whether you're on the mound or you're in the box, but when you're in a backyard at seven, eight years old, this is what you're replicating. Is there a clock back there? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's you're robbing it. You're robbing it of, of the natural resolution of the scenario. And to that point, I I have seen countless people saying, well, you know what? If that's a situation and the guy can't get in the box, that's on him. He should know the rule. And I said, okay, let's just take the example that Nate just shared. Des Bryant, is it a catch? Is it not a catch? You could say, well, there's a rule in place about whether that's a catch or not a catch. There's a definition for what a catch mm-hmm. is. But you know the difference between those two scenarios? That there was a play that took place. There was something to actually look at. If you were putting a pitch clock in baseball and you rob somebody of the moment and you say, nope, game's over, and somebody says that's the rule, how fulfilling is that for either camp when you're looking yeah. at that going, sure, that's the rule, but nothing happened? I, do are you we, have an serious? issue, the fact that the players' union agreed to this? This was a part of the agreement. Look, I don't. I mean, I don't want to get too deep down this rabbit hole, and we've been pro player for as long as the freaking day is long, but I, I genuinely believe that this was one of those things that the union agreed to to protect their financial interest. I agree. They said, you know what? We'll, if if, we'll if this means our players this. get more money, then you can do this, and that's unfortunate. And like I, I can't say that I would maybe feel any differently if I was part of the union in that in that situation. I sure. I would probably throw Manfred a bone too. But I I genuinely think this was one of their stronger bargaining chips in that in that discussion. I don't know, man. It's disappointing. That's all I know. Hopefully, it changes. Hopefully things are different. Side note, uh, World Baseball Classic isn't using any of this stuff. And I thought it was a pretty interesting point. I don't remember who was saying it, but like the guys that are going to leave to go play the WBC, not getting this. You know what I mean? Not getting the time to get used to these rules. It's going to be interesting. Do those guys have a slower start at the beginning of the year because they didn't have those extra two weeks to work on it, you know? (sighs) <sighs> I mean, it's going to be a clown show regardless. I don't think there's, yeah. I mean, you, if you look at the, the precise data, I'm sure. Yeah. Those guys will probably get off to a slightly slower start just cause they, they miss out on that, but it, it's going to be a, a clown it, show. I wonder what like the in the in game stadium revenue changes. You know what I mean? Not wanting to get up to go to the concessions because, you know, you only have five seconds. <laughs> so, like, right. how much does that affect? You know and what I mean? And a, that's got to be a part of the equation. That's that a very to... real concern. And yeah. that same that same uh, bit that I was watching on, I think it was MLB Network this morning. And it was the same guy where he was talking about, hey, the pitch clocks don't cut out baseball. It cuts out the non-baseball. It, it was the same guy that just brushed that off. He's like, yeah. He's like, you know, and I wish I remember the guy's name, but he was like, you know, uh, I've been hearing a lot about fans talk about how they're they're concerned about like is something as simple as like the concession thing and how they're just how they're not going to have any time. And he just brushed it on the rug and he goes, yeah, you know, but uh, the games are shorter. And I'm like, these are these are like real legitimate concerns for somebody not to mention you're charging these families of four hundreds of dollars to go yeah. to to take a day a, a day trip to the ballpark and then they're not even going to be able to capture all nine innings of the game or eight yeah. or seven however however early they have to leave to to get the kids home you're going to rob them of even that like this is a this is like a very real thing and that's just, in a that's society just one that's thing. the most impatient we've ever been as a human race. The most impatient. The most I need it now we've ever been as humans. I said it. Uh, we, we uh, Ryan and I, last episode when you were out, we dove into this a little bit in terms of uh, just like the the need for for everything. And... I said, I, I saw a comment on, 
on one of the threads or in, in one of the comment sections. And it was something that I just hadn't thought about before until I, I read it. But the guy was like, you know, I don't go to a baseball game in a hurry. Mm. Like I don't, I don't go and sit in it's my true. seat thinking I need this to be over so I can get home. Yeah. Like if that's the case, don't go. Right. Like try to find one later in the week or, or next month. Like I don't, and I've thought about that before. If I'm sitting down to watch a baseball game, I'm not trying to get it over with. You know why? Because I like baseball. Yeah. And, that's and why I'm I want there. there. I want there to be. That's why I'm there. That's why I'm watching the game. Yeah. I want there to be more baseball. And for you to say again, it circles back to the the argument of, well, you're not you're not getting rid of actual baseball. You're getting rid of the the non baseball. We've already told you that that's not true. Yes, a percentage of it is pure dead time. Mm-hmm. But to say that again. Second, that the 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 ball hits the catcher's mitt to when the the pitcher releases the next throw to say that's all dead time, idiotic. You don't know what's so, going on. You don't you don't understand the game enough to know that there are this is a chess match and things have to be decided and chosen during those breaks. <sighs> Sad. Like you can see. I don't know how many at bats you watched from the last couple of days, but you can just see the the expedited thought process of these guys in between pitches and and Mm -hmm. i i'm so tired of dealing with the nerds on social media where they're just like well they're just gonna have to get used to it that's the new rule it's like okay nerd like try playing baseball just one day in your life to actually maybe understand this like (laughs) baseball is such a data number analytic driven game and i don't mean the sen- i don't mean that from the sense of like advanced analytics i'm talking about just purely outcomes probabilities things like yeah. that like the on a very basic elementary level and there's a lot of things whether you're a pitcher whether you're a hitter whether you're a guy in the infield trying to align yourself defensively based on probabilities and likelihoods there's so much that goes into each pitch and that's what these these nerds aren't seeing and when you just expedite that, you're, I, I'm of the belief that as, as we we make the movement, as we make the push to rush this, mm-hmm. that you're gonna have a lesser product. Sure, you're gonna have a quicker product. We've already yeah. seen the numbers. We're looking at two two hours, thirty five minutes, two forty, on these spring training games, and the, as the uh, early data shows. But I I truly think the the product from I don't want to say a wow factor or like from an athletic standpoint, but just like the buildup, just the buildup and the potential of what you could see is going to diminish because you're not giving these guys time. You're not giving these guys proper time to, to evaluate like, okay, what's the best thing to do here? They're going at this point in time in in the early months and probably the, the full year until we can really get used to this. Guys are just going to be thinking, okay, I got to beat the clock. Yeah. I'm just going to go with the first thing that sounds good and just make sure we're ready. Yeah. And I think you're going to see pitchers overworked because they're working faster. Probably. I think you're going to see velocity go down. You're going to see. Probably. And I saw somebody, I don't know if it was on MLB Network or if it was on uh, social media, but I saw some guy talking about how, yeah, we're probably going to see pitchers go. We're probably going to see starting pitcher, uh, starting pitchers have shorter outings. And I said, then what we're already seeing. Yeah, I know we're seeing guy. We're happy. If a guy goes five innings, you're telling yeah. me we're looking at maybe three and two thirds, four and a third. Well, I'm just, I'm just trying to think about like uh, the, the pregame preparation, like getting in the bullpen and warming up. You know what I mean? Like that, that it changes a lot of guys. It changes their, their routine. It cha- I mean, like it, what's the point of going to the bullpen and warming up as slow as you want? Might as well get an idea of having the similar pace of what you're looking for in game. So there's just there's a lot that I think it changes more than than what they think. I think it changes a lot more than what they think. And I don't care about the business side of it. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some penalty or some payment that has to go out when MLB when when games last longer and and those local TV channel providers are are missing you know parts of the next show 
that are supposed to come on after the game. And I'm sure there's payouts and I'm sure there's stuff that MLB is dealing with that way, but it's like, who cares, man? The, that's, the time in between innings is because of commercials. 100% because of commercials. We've had actual MLB guys tell us, yes, players on the field, umpires, we're ready to go. But there's still a guy in the dugout with the hand up saying, nope, we're still on commercial break. At what point does MLB just look internally and say, this is part of our issue too. This is a part of our problem. Maybe we can shorten this up a little bit. I don't know. I've, I've said before, I'm total as much as I hate commercials and advertising and everybody else I'm sure would agree with me on that. I'm all for having in-game commercial breaks. They they've talked about that before. Like I'm perfectly yeah. okay with that. Give me the split screen. I don't care. That's fine. But, but don't try to don't try to trick me or fool me into thinking that this is just a a, a player issue. Yeah. It's not. Like we're not talking nobody's talking about commercial links right now. Or or in between inning breaks right now, and that's just how Major League Baseball wants it. They don't want it. They don't. They got to protect their little their little product in between innings so they can make a buck. But we're not talking about that, and that's exactly what they were hoping for. My, I mean, if I took more time to think about it, I'd probably have a, a more specific, maybe in depth resolution, but. In just talking about this for the length of time we've been talking about it and over the course of the last couple of days that we've seen the small sample size of this, my resolution or adjustment or tweak to make to this would be move it to 20 seconds. Stop, stop, like stop pausing the game to indicate a penalty being imposed. Right. Don't legitimately enforce it but just have it in the ballpark so yeah. people are at least aware. Like it, it's it's kind of funny we're talking about this it's because it's harshly penalized, isn't it? That's a very big result. A strike in a ball is a very yeah. big result. Which Take away a mound visit. You know what I mean? Like do that kind of stuff. Which opens up a whole nother can of worms. Like who's like how are we crediting these these stats? Like yeah. does this enhance pitchers? Strike to ball ratio, like does it count we, as a strikeout? Does it count as a strikeout? Like all just goofy, gimmicky things that we wouldn't have to deal with if we weren't implementing this. But back to my my what I was saying, the 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 resolution that I'm thinking of is make it 20 seconds. Don't pause the game to indicate whether it's a ball or strike, and have have this big like drawn out like this mm. is on the batter. Uh, too much time, strike. Don't do that and don't legitimately enforce it. But again, just have it have the clocks in the ballpark so at least people can think about it. And like I was saying, I was ha we were having a conversation with some friends of ours the other day about trying to limit our screen time on our phones. And we're like, mm -hmm. uh, it just been it's like been really high recently. And one of our friends was like, you know what I did is I took the which I would recommend this to anybody who's listening and maybe is dealing with the same thing. Take the on the on the iPhones, take the screen time widget and put it on your home screen. Mm, I see it all the time. Yeah. And you're you're constant you're like aware of it you're now. Aware you go, of it, yeah. Oh crap. Like I, I'm not gonna put like these hard pre like these hard and fast uh like lockout limits on my phone where like yeah. my phone just shuts off after yeah, so much. Because yeah. that's goofy. Yeah. Like, especially in case of, like emergency or whatever, or in baseball's case, uh, a postseason game or something, it's goofy <laughs> to have this crap. Yeah. But you're you're aware of it, so have these things in the ballpark. And if and if a guy is just a repeat offender of it, then figure out some sort of way. Like you said, take yeah. away a, take away a mountain visit or a Don't challenge. Take yeah. away a challenge. I'm 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 have okay with that. Have a warning enforced. Like yeah, I think there's there's ways to get there. I think there's ways to get there. That's, this isn't it. That would be my my thought. I like it. It's not gonna happen, but I like it. It's not, but. <laughs> It makes it makes too much sense for it to to be yeah. implemented, but here we are. Um, anything else on that? I knew we were gonna go deep, but hmm. not not for now. I I'm do sure feel it's better. Gonna though. It's gonna be a continued topic, and I and I get it. I, I should have prefaced everything I said by saying I'm. I know that I'm. You're not. I'm not gonna change anybody's mind on this. Yeah. This is probably one of those topics. 
across baseball that people are going to be as entrenched as they ever have been or will be because it's being it's what's being talked about the most and the mm-hmm. popular thing in anything in baseball and politics is to it, disagree is to disagree and if something's being talked about as the primary point of discussion the most popular thing to do and the easiest thing to do is just pick a side and just dig in your heels and yep. that's what people are doing and yep. i'll admit i i don't have <laughs> as as idealistic as i'd like to be about it about the possibility of maybe you know switching camps here i i think i will forever be on the side that baseball should not have a clock that's just yeah. me yeah. so i'm with you i'm just here to more so to vent than to try to change anybody's mind because i know that i'm not going to so would you real quick i mean is of the of the, all of the rule changes that are either in effect or talking about you know talked about being put into effect is this the one thing you would take away? Like, would you swap this with a robo ump? Like, would you prefer a robo ump over pitch clock? No, I don't think the, I don't think the robo ump does anything. I think we've already seen like s- small sample size, not small sample sizes of it, but like we've seen examples of it enough to this point to know that like they have a lot of work to do in that mm-hmm. regard. Yeah. And if they if they introduce robo umps, then it takes away the art of catching. Whether people want to agree with that or not, it's just yeah. it, that's just the reality of it. Like the the art yeah. of catching is removed. drastically it's altered, gone. if not just altogether removed. And like it goes back to this element. I call it an old school mindset. Whatever, I don't care. But as as somebody who's watched baseball for. 20, 25, almost 25 years now. I like being able to complain about a call yep. due to human error. Like yep. say what you want about getting the right call. And I get it. That's this like younger generations thing of like wanting everything to be upright and upstanding and a hundred percent and, and morally okay. And, and, and I, I get all that and it's, it's admirable. It's admirable, but it's not going it. to happen. So like in this little corner of life where baseball for all intents and purposes is pretty inconsequential compared to everything else in the world. Mm -hmm. Like why not just keep this little, this little aspect of the game where, you know what, on a random Thursday night in June, you can just let the umpire have it. Say, you know what, like, what are you doing? That was a terrible call and go on, go on about your day. Like, who cares if it's 100% accurate all of the time? Like, I don't need that. I want to be able to complain. But the second that you get a little box up there with little dots popping up based on where the pitch lands, you lose that. And to me, it takes out a pretty enjoyable aspect of the game. Like, I like complaining about umpires. Even if they even if they prefer the the pitch clock over Robo Ump. If you had to choose. Oh, if I had to choose, I'm I'm one thousand percent taking the robo umps. I'm just really? I'm just sharing my thoughts on the robo. I like I don't like yeah. either of them, which is basically yeah, what I was yeah. trying to say. But yeah, no, get the I I think the the it just again it comes back to having a clock in baseball. Like, regardless how it speeds up the game, changes the game, makes the game better, the the very nature of having a clock in baseball I just don't agree with. And I, I probably never will. Yeah. Because again, I don't go to baseball games in a hurry. I don't go to baseball games to watch them as fast as I can. Yeah. To get it over with. Because why would I be there? And if you're at home and you can't get your responsibilities done because the game lasted too long, then that's on you. It has nothing to do with the game. I stayed up late last night, so I'm tired this morning for work because the game went into extra innings. Then go to bed. <laughs> I don't know. We what, all got, what do you want to? What do you want to do? We all got to make choices here, folks. Like, yeah, be we, an adult. Just go to bed. I don't get it. Or man up. Just stay up late and man up. Like we're not gonna. We're not gonna talk. And I've brought this up before. We're not gonna have the conversation about the length, the average length of NFL games and action time, right? In NFL games and how that compares to Major League Baseball. We're not gonna do that because. 
you're not going to want to have that conversation because you'll be sorely upset at the end of that conversation. But all that to say, you got anything else on that? Nope. Nothing. Um, I'm over it already. It's three days in. Yep. <laughs> Do you think... Last thing I'll uh, I'll say about this topic, because I was actually thinking about it this morning in regards to myself. What do you think it would take? And it would presumably take a lot. What do you think it would take for you to stop being a fan of baseball? Major League Baseball, I'll say. For you to just disengage from the professional level altogether. Uh, and if you can't think anything off the top of your head, that's okay because that yeah. that shows me like how much it would probably take. But it would it would it would take a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, I I think that's I think they know that right. Like they they know oh, that yeah. the diehards aren't going anywhere, despite what they comment on Facebook saying yeah. I'm. I'm I've been a they fan take advantage for of us. 37 years. I'm done. And then they're coming in on the post like the next week. Yeah. That was I a think good they game. take advantage of us. The fact that we're not going anywhere. I don't know if I have an answer for it. I mean, it's it, it's probably just like the the accumulation of things that if if a robo ump is is involved and in, you know, if there is a salary cap and if we get rid of leagues and if we're starting to let in 20 teams into the postseason, uh, you know, it's, it's going to get, it's going to get to the point where there's so many things. I don't know. I don't know if I have a, a exact answer to it. So I don't know what that means about me, but no, I think you're exactly right. I think it's the point of, they know that. And yeah, there, I bet you they probably, I gar, I would almost guarantee you that they they brought a hundred people into a room and asked them that very question. They said, yeah. "What would it take? Like, where is your limit? Where's your line in the sand for this?" Yeah, and they probably just took like, they probably created some sort of average threshold based on the responses, and they said, "Okay, we're gonna push it to that point." And then we'll reevaluate in five to 10 years and see if we can maybe move the field goal back a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, just shout out to the, the Savannah bananas. I mean, this is this type of baseball that they're, they're having fun with and they're engaged with the fans. I mean, that that's the kind of stuff that I think is going to get more popular, bringing more fun to the game versus less rules. Oh, I'm all about more rules. I'm all about what the bananas are doing, but it's yeah. because they market it as such. Yeah. Major League Baseball tries to feed us the lie of like, you know, like we care about yeah. the integrity of the game. We care about improving the product. You don't care about anything except the bottom dollar or the bottom line and your dollar. Like that's, that's all it is. So don't try to feed me this line about trying to make the game better. You're just trying to alter the game to tweak the game as much as you can yeah. to get the eyes, get the attention off of your commercial breaks, your advertising. Your financial interests as much yeah. as you can. You gotta That's... remember the commissioner represents the owners. So obviously it's all money driven. All doesn't, money doesn't driven. matter about the game. They don't care. They do not care. That's why half your owners don't care about the product on the field. Because they just care about the money. But that's a conversation that this They loud, don't want to have. This People don't want to talk about does not yeah. want to have. It's nuts. What else is nuts, Kyle? Uh, trying to get tickets apparently for yeah. <laughs> for you and I. Like that's ah! that's what's nuts. I won't go into details here, but uh, your favorite podcast hosts are kind of in a little bit of a pickle. Not due to SeatGeek, trust me. Not due to SeatGeek. Made the mistake of venturing away from them, but we were unfortunately for those who are curious. We were kind of put in a situation to where we had to, unfortunately, stray away from our fr friends at SeatGeek temporarily to make this World Baseball Classic thing work out. 
yeah. wasn't a big deal, but like just some things came up. We just had to, you know, had to call an audible and boy, has it backfired. Like I'll never, I'll never do that again. Awful. Unbelievable. Legitimately got the wrong tickets. Like we bought the correct tickets and were given the wrong tickets. I have an and email. And it's not even close to being it's not even close to being the right tickets. It's like we no. bought five games worth of tickets and we got one game. Yeah, we got the so And it's all, not even a USA game. <laughs> no, we're all we're only interested in the night game slate, or I think it's called like the, the night game strip is what it said on the on the on the website. And so we ordered that, obviously, because we want to go to all the Team USA games. And so we purchased that. And the order is in my account right now where it says full. You have you ordered tickets for the full game strip at this price and for these seats in this location. We got tickets for like the Columbia, Mexico game. Sunday morning <laughs> or something, right? Like yeah. It's not even- and just that game, not even like additional games in addition to that it's literally just the columbia and i said okay pump the brakes whoa <laughs> this is a fraction of the cost of what we paid for so like, how's that not a red flag and so i've been spending the last month trying to get this ticket thing figured out so i say all that to say that there's a chance that uh we may be like watching the the game from like the top of a tree out beyond center field <sighs> that's like above sea level. I don't know. Like we're going to have to figure out some vantage point to watch it. Cause we may or may not be in, in the, the freaking ballpark. And it's all because we didn't go with sea geek. Yeah. Take it Literally. from us. Don't, I, I haven't run into issues with sea geek. Never. I had issues. Remember with the, uh, yeah, the, the wild, wild card, card game. Yeah. It was with vivid seats. Where I bought the tickets in case it was going to be at Yankee Stadium. You got the tickets in case it was in Fenway. Took like, I don't know, six weeks to get a refund. I had to call multiple times. It's like, I, who works at these places? Yeah, you you threw out vivid seats. I don't know why I'm like trying to protect this website. Yeah, it was StubHub. StubHub yeah, is garbage. Trash. Never use StubHub ever. Please, just take it from me. And that's not an exaggeration. Like... I was talking, and if if you don't believe me, message Nate. Hit him, hit him up with a DM. He can tell you the things I was telling him before we hopped on this podcast. Like they're leg legitimately terrible customer service. They yeah. just leave. They just leave you out in the dark. They don't tell you like when these things are going to be resolved. They're just like, you'll get your tickets. Okay, when? Yeah. Like when? They am just I said get before the game. That's what they said. Yeah, I literally said this. This is fun. <laughs> I feel like I'm like outing them right now. They, I literally said, I, I talked, I was talking to the customer rep, the customer service rep today. And I was like, okay, I've talked, I've called you guys like six or seven times since I ordered these tickets and I've been fed the same line of crap. I was like, when am I going to get my tickets? Because the event is less than two weeks away. Yeah. And you're flying across the country. And she said, she said before the event. And I said, okay. So does this mean that I'll be like, I'll get the, I'll get my tickets. Like when I'm in the parking lot, the day of the event and there was a pause and she said before the event, I said, okay, I'm out. I'm done. And I just hung up the phone. Like I, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't deal with them anymore. So sell it to say, I'll call for you. I'll light them up. Please. I will. I, I think I'll say things that you're not willing to say. I am. I'll go there. I'm forever. Believe it or not. I'll go full taken mode. Like I'll hunt down their family and <laughs> well, do what I need to do. Let's not let's not do anything illegal. Um I'm willing to. I'm never the bad cop. Like I don't know if that comes as a surprise to people. I feel like that's on it. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. Like I know sometimes I can get fired up and maybe seem like a jerk, but I'm I'm always a good cop. Meredith's always a bad cop. Um so you may need to you may need to call them for me. Yeah. 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 But uh SeatGeek. Go there. Use our promo code. Use use SeatGeek. Don't use anything else. Why you ask? Because it's answer to all your ticket needs. You're looking for tickets, you have plans of friends or family to make it to an upcoming game or concert, or maybe even the World Baseball Classic, or even looking months ahead. 
or have you been looking for months and trying to figure something out for months and you just keep <laughs> getting misled like we have been? Well, don't do whatever you're doing. Go with SeatGeek. With SeatGeek, you can find tickets to games, concerts, shows, and even theater performances with just a few easy clicks. We're making it even better for you if you're a first-time user SeatGeek. Next time you add some tickets to your cart, use our promo code 30TAKE. That's our social handle. At checkout to save $20 instantly off your first purchase as a first-time user. It's all you got to do to save some of that. Fees, concession purchases, an extra merchandise purchase, however you see it, but it is cold hard cash. Enter promo code 30 take. That's our social handle at checkout. All right. Quite literally a, a minute or a, a full hour into this thing. Let's uh let's talk Manny Machado. Man. Getting bags. I you- just didn't understand it when I saw the alert. I was like, I how? So where's this money coming from? Could you <laughs> I'm not even gonna try to answer that question. I because I have no idea. And I, at this point I don't really want to know. Like I don't know what kind of illegal business they got going on over there. But there were it's working. You know, they clearly listen to podcasts where we're always clamoring for these owners to spend money. Yeah. They said, you know what, we'll do it. We'll yeah, we'll have multiple forty five year olds on our team. Well, I don't care. Like not worried about it. Doesn't matter to us. We're gonna go out and try to win a World Series. Um but the question I have is does Manny Machado by definition, be, become the first 500. No, that's not how that works, right? Like, he, you can't call Manny Machado the first $500 million dollar player, right? No, because he can't technically just, like, add up all of career earnings. Which, well, no, no, but, like... It's two separate contracts. It's two sure, separate agreements, yeah, yeah. so I don't think it can count. I'm just looking at it from the point of view of like his his tenure. Yeah. It's consecutive. It's with a singular organization. Yeah, it was added on in a way if you if you want to look at it like that. But yeah, I guess we'll wait for Shohei to be the first 500 million dollar guy. Like that's I'm totally okay. With that. uh, yeah, or we're so. kind of expecting it. So yeah, one of the two. Uh, but yeah, or Machado agree or both. Uh, Machado agreed to an 11. Well, hold on, let's pump the brakes. You think now you think Soto is going to be part of this picture, assuming they're in the the hunt for Shohei? I don't know. I do, I have no limitations that are on the San Diego Padres anymore. The because all we, has been removed. Because Ryan and I were literally just talking about this last episode, following the news of him saying like, "Yeah, plans to opt out." And Ryan yeah. and I got on here and we're like, "That makes sense." Like this, yeah. and we we said this is a perfectly placed opt out right. because like you were able to 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 ball out. For the mm-hmm. first half of the your contract, and then it's smack dab in the middle. You have an opt out, and you go, especially with the the mo- the the contracts we've just seen handed out. Like this could not have worked out better for him. So we're going off the knowledge or the assumption that he's going to opt out, and then that would open the door then for the Padres to go and get a guy like Soto. Because if you're looking at it, common sense tells you you if you're going to mm-hmm. try to lock down one of those two, you want to go with Soto. He's mm-hmm. younger. The ceiling is much higher, in my opinion. Um, and then you could possibly, if you really wanted to go crazy, just go off the wall, is maybe jump into the the Shohei sweepstakes. But now, within the last week, they've said, no, we want Machado. And it sounds like they're still kind of in on this Soto thing. And you can assume because it's the Padres and you've seen what they've done that they're somehow also going to want to be in on the Shohei sweepstakes. So, like, something has to give. Where do you think it gives? I don't know. Do you I let can't Soto walk? answer that question. I, I would assume so, yes. I, I feel like once this was announced, it, it kind of seemed like Soto's out. And, and he's going to be getting... What's the top? So, Mike Trout's at 12 for 425, right? I think that's the biggest. I need to double check on that. I feel like so much happened this offseason. I don't think that got surpassed, but I need to. I don't to. think it did either. I think I think it's then Mookie, then Judge, now Machado at four, at the fourth highest. I think I do think Juan Soto surpasses all of them. And if you're talking about just the 
I think you can average out, and it, I'm sure someone knows these numbers better and is probably yelling at us right now, but if you were to average out the Manny contract, Tatis, Xander, I'm going to go ahead and assume that's between 90 and 100 mil a year just right there with those three guys. Mix in all the other roster, all the other sides of the roster and, and other contracts and Joe Musgrove and you Darvish and whatever. I just don't understand how another 35 to $40 million a year contract can be added in. I think this was to soften the blow and somewhat of a preemptive strike to losing Soto. That's what it feels like to me. And I do think that there is a point where the Padres won't be able to keep up with the big dogs. The Yankees, the Dodgers, the Red Sox, you know, those types of organizations, I think are going to get to the point where they will surpass offers that the Padres are willing to make. Don't lump the Red Sox into a big, big dogs conversation. I guess they're out. Yeah, I guess they're out. So Mets, Yankees, Dodgers. Anybody else? I don't, I don't think we're really. I mean, the Astros don't really, even with their success. I would really, say that's the next tier down. I feel like yeah, the Phillies, like all those guys are the out. next. Yeah, the next tier down. So I think those three right now are pretty much the only ones in that conversation. From a, spend, Brave, from the a Braves do, Yeah, the Braves do it in a budgetary way. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I don't see the Padres being able to keep up with some of those guys. And that's why they had to get to. Manny now. If he hit the market, they're not they're not keeping up. Yeah, so again, 11 years for 350 million, no opt-outs, full no trade clause. Uh he had 6 years including this uh, this upcoming season 2023. He had 6 years remaining on the original 10-year 300 million dollar deal uh that was inked back in 2019 uh almost to the date or almost to the day um so as it stands right now they've got Tatis for 340 Machado for 350 Bogarts for 280 uh you've got Darvish for 108 Musgrove for a clean 100 and then you just uh, avoided arbitration with Soto for 23 uh, and he's about to be a free agent. So six guys, man, that's, that's six guys. And you're talking 150 mil, but here's the thing. you look on the business side of it? Yes, this is, a, this is an attempt to get at least one ring, maybe a few. And then you kind of talk about like the the additional revenue that can creep in as seasons are, are, are as careers are coming to a close. And this is coming from, you know, a Yankee fan that has, has seen this type of spending, you know, similar spending, not dollar for dollar the same, but similar spending in years past where you see legends career coming to an end and you see the marketing that goes around that and the ticket sales that comes around that, wanting to see the end of Machado's career, Xander's career, Tatis's career, potentially Soto's career. Like that is bonus revenue on top of winning. And I think the expectation is, and, and obviously the production isn't going to be there for guys at that, those points in their career. But... Talk about the additional legacy that can be built around these types of players and keeping them around that long. I can say firsthand, it's almost worth it as a fan. It's almost worth it to be in a bit of a struggle point towards the end of these contracts. If rings come in that period. If. that is, It is 100% reliant on that. Yankee fans were totally okay watching Jorge and Mo and Pettit and Jeter all kind of end their career gracefully because of the rings they brought. 
Padres have to do the same. And if you're talking about this ending in some type of ring of fame monument at the ballpark kind of scenario, you're talking about an organization that that probably really successfully put themselves on the map and completely solidified themselves. But again, it's all reliant on those rings. They have to come. And with these with these contracts, I'm going to have to say it's probably more than one. You need at least two. And it's I think it's doable. I really do. I think it is doable. Yeah, almost like a decade plus, I think. Yeah. With these with this talent, with yeah. these names, uh I would I would chalk that up as a as a failure if you don't have multiple with hundred percent with that roster. Hundred percent. And it's it's the it's the you know the cost of of losing those guys too, you know? And and you look at the Padre front office, you I just yeah, I can't imagine seeing seeing a, a guy like Manny come in, provide everything that he has. And then go see him in a Met uniform, you know, after everything that's starting to build up. They have this momentum that's gathered. And it seems like they've like they've overcome the the Tati suspension. It kind of feels that way. Like they've softened the blow thoroughly with these other names that where it's like it's not even gonna come into play, man. I think it's gonna be forgettable after five or six years have passed and Tatis is doing what he's supposed to be doing. I think it's safe to say with this uh, Machado extension that the thought of him being an Oriole, the thought of him being a Dodger, very, I mean, especially being a Dodger, but very much in the rear view mirror at this point. Mm -hmm. Like I think if it, if we aren't, if we weren't already at that point of viewing Machado as a, what they're saying a padre for life not like truly for the length of his career but like the guy that's going to be there for the long haul like if there was any question about that it's obviously safe to assume that we can put those concerns to bed and i think it's i think it's cool because as as interesting as it is to see guys from day one to the day they hang up the spikes stay with one team it's 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 almost as cool for me to see a guy, you know, maybe he, he, he gets bounced around a little bit early, gets a couple trades or whatever, but then real like once he's really come, like come into his own and kind of planted his feet and made the decision that he's going to mm-hmm. stick with the team. And I know that I've, I've probably been quoted on the whole trout situation where it's like, that's a huge mistake. Like you you kind yeah. of dug your own grave there. Like there's yeah. a lot, there's a lot more that goes into it than just signing a contract to stay with the team. Like there yeah. has to be things around that situation that make it worth it. But yeah, I, it, I, I do think it's cool that he's going to be there for the long haul. And if you're Manny, I think you look at the Padres and you look at like the front office making these decisions, the willingness to push chips in the middle of the table it it would be a different story if Manny was the first one of all these contracts. You know what I mean? I think it would probably would have been he I'm assuming his camp would have been a little more tentative to accepting so quickly. I think it is the fact that like you have the you have the loyalty of the fan base built in already. It's already there. It's established. They love you. The front office believes in you, but they also believe in their own organization. And they believe in their roster. And they have a track record specifically with the last year and a half showing that they are willing to do this. Why Why would anything change? Do you see the front office changing at all? Do you see any other moves really altering things that much? So if you're in Manny's camp, you're this is like the best case scenario. You know what I mean? Like you have, it checks all the boxes. And again, you have an organization that could very well have created some type of dynasty. They very well could have. 
and you're in San Diego. Like, let's and you're not in lose, the, like, the let's greatest, not lose sight like, of that. Yeah, the greatest baseball weather city you can imagine. I and mean, a cool if, ballpark. I mean, it's yeah. Like if this if this same roster, all the same contract extensions, everything was the same, but this was in Seattle. I'm like, I mean, yeah, Seattle's cool, I guess, but like it's it's not San Diego. Yeah. But the fact that you can you can check all of those other boxes that you were talking about and mm. then be reminded, oh yeah, this is also San Diego. Right. Like it's a no brainer. And I I just I like the dollar amount. I like that it is more than Tatis. It is more than Xander. Clearly more than, you know, Musgrove and Darvish, obviously. But it's what it it's what it represents and what it's it's what it says. And he is, we've talked about it before. Like he's kind of flipped the script on us. Like we were the first to admit that we were not fans when he was in in Baltimore, and even when he was a Dodger, it's just like we didn't we didn't get the antics. I didn't love the the hot dog look that he always has. Um, but it's almost like he's matured into this leadership role and, and a captain role. It this the statement of the dollar amount says that you're our guy, even though we've done all this. We've got all these other guys. We took care of them first. You're still our, still our guy. So, yeah, I don't. I can't think of a more perfect scenario. I I genuinely can't think of another contract that we've seen that shows the willingness to do these types of things. Even when you look at Mookie in L.A. Even when you look at that, because you're watching this team kind of like bit of a limbo. Let certain guys walk. You got the Bauer but, situation kind of going right, on. Like which there's a little there's a but. lot of like just uncertainness around that organization. And like any other contract, I just I can't I can't really imagine. You you maybe talk about like the the first initial contract with A Rod in New York. You know, it's just like think of a a guy that's at the top of his game that commits to his team a team that has competed that is right on the brink of tipping over into being just a perennial nlcs candidate i can't think of any other contract yeah so i've never i've I've just i can't i can't remember anything aligning the way this has with both the organization and the player yeah and and i'll I'll just be the first to say the the image of seeing Machado and Bogarts go around the horn after a strikeout. I mean, come on. Clean. Forget about the forget about like the in game action. Just yeah. like Yeah. Well, if we have the, time to do it. As, you, you've got to go four true. seconds. Yeah. We may, four seconds. We may not even have around the horns. I don't know what I'm really talking <laughs> about. But like give me the camera angle from the third base dugout well where you've got it's you you're looking Directly out to center field, you've got Machado about, yeah. in line. You've got the, Xander in line. Like, yeah, flip it. That, Let's go. Pa- I swear, I hope Padres fans take full advantage and appreciate what they have. Seriously. Because you yeah. have 29 other baseball teams wishing yep. they had that very thing. 100%. 100%. It's going to be pretty, man. It's going to be real pretty. And like the, I think... I was just talking about like the hot dog style of, of Manny Machado, the, the cool slow heartbeat style that he has. The perfect example to compare him to is the opposite end of the spectrum with Tatis, right? It's the balls to the wall. I'll do whatever I can to make this play The you know, we've seen injuries attached to that. Byron Buxton is another example. It's like the way that Manny plays the position that he's at. He's established at third base Right, is this isn't a position change where he's going from short to third. That narrative is gone. That's done. He is top of the line, staying in his position. No one's gonna slide into third base at any point during this contract and take it from him. To name a better, a, a more aligned contract. You can't. I've never seen anything like this to where the player and the team are both winning. 
and it's and it's perfectly done and it's and it's perfect timing and you have the rest of this roster even if Soto goes even if Soto's gone whatever you know what i mean like you have the production that's that's you know throughout there this was perfect and i don't use that word often this was perfect uh wrapping up here um I mean, I feel like a lot's been going on in baseball, but we obviously had to go a little, a little deeper on a couple topics. Uh, James Click, Blue Jays announced that they they snatched up the uh, the former Astros GM, who was offered a measly one year contract by the Astros following this most recent World Series, which we've already talked about, but mm-hmm. ultimately a slap in the face. Big time. Um, so you know the Astros bring Click in. They say, "Hey, look, we're in some hot water." Get us back on track. They bring him in after after this whole thing. He does what he does. They do what they do, and then they turn around and say, "How's one year sound?" And he says, uh, "I'm I'm walking. Thanks." So the Blue Jays go and make their front office a whole lot better. They're bringing him in as the VP of Baseball Strategy. So certainly going to have a a pretty heavy hand in in the decision making in that in that front office. Um, just an idiotic move if you're the the Houston Astros. I would have to think. I agree. I mean, I'm a little baffled as to why this took so long for him to get a job. Yeah, I, I mean, there had to have been, in my mind, at least 25 other teams calling. Options were limitless. Like you, if you're able to do that, and there's no stink. You know what I mean. He wasn't there during the scandal. So it's not like there's like any PR stuff you got to worry about. It's just a really good baseball mind. He should have had a job months ago. Kind of upset that, you know, I am i don't know. As a Yankee fan, I'm kind of upset they didn't go get a position for him. I'm sure as a Red Sox fan, any other fan, you're like, what? <laughs> we should have got that guy. He knows what he's doing. So the Blue Jays are making some interesting moves. Brought in Donnie Baseball as well to the coaching staff. Like, I think there's things that they're supporting coaching, front office. There's certain moves they're making that are pretty smart. I'm just going to need to see a little more from the Blue Jays before I can buy in. Because I'm I'm still a little, I know I've mentioned it recently, but I'm still got a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth from this whole, like, You've mm-hmm. seen the trailer now. Get ready for the movie. Like mm-hmm. I feel like that's been the narrative for a little while now, and I haven't really yeah. seen much. So I'm gonna need to see a little bit more before I can buy into these moves. And the same thing with like with the Mets. I mean, not the not the same scenario in terms of the Blue Jays bringing in a different manager, but like you look at the personnel moves that the Mets made with like with Buck, and you were yeah. completely sold on it. Like, no, this is gonna be the difference. And I said. I'm going to need to see like I that's not enough and it kind of for me it it it's the same thing with the Blue Jays where Donnie you know Donnie baseball great baseball mind great acquisition James Click great baseball mind great baseball acquisition but I'm just going to need to see it and I know it's an easy way out be like oh well you'll just hop on board when they start winning it's like I'm not going to hop on board with the Blue Jays cuz I don't yeah. like yeah. I don't care yeah. about the Blue Jays but like yeah. in order for me to fear them fully appreciate these moves to to fear them as a ball club i'm just gonna need to see more than just yeah. some some sound bites from vladdy jr in spring training because that that just we, we've seen that just doesn't cut it yeah it's fair I don't, I'm, I'm starting to fear him a little bit i think it's getting there it's getting to that point i hate to say it and I'm not going to go off on a, a tangent here, but <sighs> I am starting to get fired up a little bit by the Red Sox just giving a finger to the rest of the league. Not even, I'm not even, we're not talking to Heim, we're not talking ownership because I, I tweeted it out the other day and I said that this is basically paraphrasing, but this is exactly what ownership wanted. They wanted to just completely pull the wool over the fan base's eyes this offseason. And then they wanted people to trick themselves into thinking that like this is a product worth being excited about or excited for. And the players in the meantime have kind of rallied around this whole like literally everybody's writing us off. Nobody yeah. cares about this team. 
our own city doesn't even care about this team at this yeah. point. And they're kind of like firing themselves up. And I'm like, I, I'll, I can get behind the boys. Like if the boys, they can fire me up. Like I'm all for that, but I'm trying to like toe the line of not buying into like this, this lie that the ownership group is telling us. And I, and the only reason I say that is because I saw a video right before we hopped on about how apparently Alex Verdugo, uh, arranged for a mariachi band into the the clubhouse at okay. spring training ballpark. And they're just doing like quirky stuff. And just yeah. the, some of the, some of the, the quotes I'm hearing from some of these guys, I'm just like, all right, I, I can kind of get behind this. So kind of going off of that like blue jays conversation it's like yeah i'm i'm just gonna be interest interested to see how some of these teams not surprised if they fall short kind stories of shake out yeah that's where i'm at it's fair we're right around the corner man right there and maybe uh maybe this pitch this pitch clock thing will get us there even quicker it will Everything will be done much quicker now. Opening day is now March 15th. We're speeding everything up. Everything yeah. is getting expedited. Push it up. We got time for it now. The season's going to be over by June 1st. <laughs> and baseball is going to be in a better place. Yeah. I can't wait. With dozens of new fans. With dozens. <laughs> Of new fans that we're going to start watching the game with or without a pitch clock. I yeah. can't wait. Cool. That's all I got. Is that it? We're there. Yeah. A uh, little plug here about the fantasy league before we get it going. Oh, um, we have opened up the fantasy league interest form. The link is in the bio. So go to, I think it's on Twitter. I think it's on Instagram. Or I know it's on Instagram. I'm pretty sure it's on Twitter. Uh, go to the link in our bio if you're interested in playing our league. There's like a little interest form. It literally takes a minute or two to fill out. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're interested in joining the league for this year, this will be our fifth year, I believe. Fifth annual yeah. uh, 3 Take League. Uh, so if you want to join us, if you want to kind of get your to, to throw your hat in the ring, fill out that interest form. Um, I think we're going to set the dead that we're going to close that link on Friday. So yeah. Friday will be the last day where you can... Uh, express your interest with that form. Uh, so go fill that out and we will be contacting the people uh, via email who are going to be with us for this league. Um, it's not really a first come first serve thing. Like we've maybe experimented with in the past. We're, we're trying to try to find the right fit. Yeah. Trying to find the right system to go about this. And I think with this form, we've, we've figured out a way to do it. So like I said, hit the link in our bio, go fill out that form. And, and if uh, you haven't seen the post, I mean, now that it's out, we can talk about it. True. We're doing stuff way different. You know, we're, we're, uh, you got big prizes at the end of the end of the year and your money's going to a fun place, you know, like we're, we're flipping it right back into some pretty interesting stuff to be able to get a, an entire bundle of hat shirt or hoodie and a Jersey, yeah, we yeah, got a postseason tickets, a team merch glove. bundle, custom glove, signed memorabilia, postseason tickets. We're even gonna do like a mid season award, kind of like they do in the minor leagues, I think, where they they kind of crown yeah. like a champion halfway through. We're gonna do one of those, uh, and there'll be a prize for that. Like yeah. this I, I put on the post, it's bigger than we've ever ever done it. And I truly sure. meant that when yeah. I like we have not done it bigger than this. So if you want a chance at winning a, a jersey, a hat, hoodie bundle, a fully customized glove. And you get to choose, by the way. If oh, you yeah. get in first place, you get first dibs on those options. So Oh yeah. It's not like you're stuck with that. You just you choose. So if you're paying attention, the top four people in the league get a pretty sweet gift. Just saying. Yeah. Gotta yeah. hustle for it. Yeah. Literally six people make the postseason. So really, all you have to do is win like in. one matchup, and yeah. you're you're pulling from that from that uh, that list. If my math proves kind of right sick, kind of sick. So yeah, link in bio. Fill out the form. Take you about a minute, maybe two. Super quick. Just getting some basic info from you. Uh, 
and we'll close that Friday and be contacting people probably over the weekend next week. Bam. That's all I got. Me too. Don't go chasing curveballs, folks. We love you all, and as always, looking forward to talking more baseball with you guys soon. Until next time, stay filthy.